Welcome, Samantha Bober, the uh, Chief Growth Officer from Rockaway. Give her a big applause. Thank you. I don't know if this is working. OK, it is. Um, hi, everyone. OK, good. People are coming in because we have a great competition kicking off. What I will say is earlier this week, we were like, how many submissions are we going to have? Where are we at on the demo day? Um, the work here is, is certainly a testament to Jennifer's tremendous effort, who has organized this, but also to all of you. We've been totally overwhelmed by how many applications we got, um, which I think speaks to this ecosystem and that people are really excited to show off their work. They even were like, wait, I only get five minutes. I have to make it crazy punchy. Like, that's exactly what I want to do. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's, we're excited. We have 13 presentations coming up. It should be a really nice snapshot, a nice culmination of today of like, so, so what are we actually talking about here? What are these products? Who are they for? How engaging are they? Are they really ready to be used? Um, so yeah, I guess the final thing I'll say is I could have been the one reacting, but my reactions would have been pretty dim because I'm pretty new <laughs> to this space. So we wanted someone who is really in the weeds. And so he is going to have some poignant reactions. Sometimes he might be stunned speechless, but we wanted someone who really knows all of you, who has worked with many projects here. Um, and so that's my friend Shahed. He's from Cerulean Ventures, which is one of the most active investors in this space. And so I'm gonna invite him on now to talk through the judges, what you can expect. Um, I think he actually didn't want to say the rules because he thought that was kind of cringe, so he wanted me to do that, which is the everyone's going to have five minutes, 30 seconds. They'll have some fierce countdown where he's going to give them an angry glare. Um, I, he's been asked to do that, so, so he's a champion for taking on that role. Um, so yeah, Jahed, are you, are you still with us? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Hello. Here he is, the man of the hour. All take right. it away. Well, I'm, I'm mic'd up. You can take that. Well, thanks for coming, everybody. Um, yeah, we love the space. I think I said, you know, we've been in the space since helping to sort of start Region Network up. We kind of were incubated out of that. We participate in many of the governance proposals across the ecosystem, especially with you know, some of the folks in here. So really happy to be here. Thanks for sticking around for this. And I think uh, it's about time to get our first one going here. So I want to invite uh, Chain for Energy up to show us their demo. Hello, guys. Uh, pleasure to be here. How is your energy? Whoa, where is your energy? OK, uh, better, better, OK. So as you see, uh, uh, where is Clicker? Where is Clicker? <laughs> How I can change the stuff? Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. Can we restart? Sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> can we restart time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Okay, okay. Let's, let's go. Mm, so as you see, I have experience in technology, maybe not here. <laughs> Uh, and I am a CIO and co-founder of our, of our uh, project. And when I saw the title of this conference, I said, this is the conference for us. We are bringing real-world use cases to the blockchain. And the question is uh, how we can present ourselves. So then we, we said, OK, our company is from Krakow. It's not quite far from, from uh, Prague. So we can drive in here by car. You see, five hours. So we can take our Lambo. Why not? But this is the bear market. So maybe this is not the best car for such conference. So let's have something what, what is more cost effective. Maybe this one. But then we said, OK, we are in the energy market. Uh, we should have EV car. So maybe this one. <laughs> And finally, we decided to have uh, our uh, uh, EV car, which we are using to show our use case. And then we, are, we can come back, come back to, to our uh, use case, what we are doing. So we are showing here the, the real use case, how to 
uh, charge EV using such cool device I can show you here. So as you see, this is a mobile charger uh, which you can plug into any plug like, like this one or, or if you have uh, three phases, you can as well plug in here. And what is special with this uh, charger, the special is <laughs> that you can uh, plug in this charger as well to the blockchain. So you have IoT device here, SIM card, which can be connected directly to the, e to the C4E wallet, which is web-free wallet. And actually, this one is connected. And we did this uh, use case uh, under BMW Foundation umbrella with uh, Blockchain City, showing the, the real use case how we can charge EV car, exchange energy to token, and vice versa. And how does it work? So you see, this is uh, our road. And uh, there are uh, nice logos of our, our project. And uh, if you are a charging station provider, you can uh, just connect to our web app, register this charger, and then you can do the magic, and you can monetize your charger. So this is actually very important, because you can buy this charger everywhere, but the question is how to monetize uh, this device. And on the other hand, if you are driver, so how to charge your car? So mobile app, you have some tokens. We did that using our C4E token, but the magic is that through the IBC, we can enable easily other, other tokens like uh, Atom, Osmosis, uh, Stablecoin, through Accelar, Ethereum, uh, other, other tokens as well. But the ultimate goal is to, monet, uh, to enable that for, fiat, uh, for users who, who wants to pay by card using fiat money because this is the where, where the real adoption comes. And you can find charger. Those blue ones are, are virtual. Uh, they are for uh, demo purposes, and we actually added one, which is Gateway to Cosmos. It's quite uh, nearby. And you see, I'm paying one C4E per uh, one kilowatt hour. Then I want to uh, charge 25 kilowatt hours of energy, and the car is connected and goes. And you see here are transactions on, on the blockchain. The first one is kind of escrow account, like collateral. So I'm putting my tokens to escrow, then charging uh, EV car. Once the transaction is uh, settled, then the smart contract is sending transaction to the other part. And uh, that's it. So thank you very much. I hope you, you like the, this, uh, this concept. And uh, so if you are interested in, we, ha we have a booth. You can see how it works. I can show you on my mobile, the app, how it works. A round of applause. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Also, thank you for not making me kick you off. That was great. You finished, <laughs> you finished with more than 30 seconds left. That's amazing. All right, so I want to have the next person up. This is Empower Chain, who will be talking to us about the plastic circular economy on chain. All right, you ready, Guillermo? I'm ready. All right, three, two, one, go. Perfect. All right, so yes, my name is Guillermo Garba. I'm uh, the CTO and one of the co founders at Empower, and we're building digital infrastructure for circular economy. Um, so this is kind of a problem that we're, I think we're all sort of familiar with now. It's waste problem, and in particular, plastic waste. It's a huge problem, it's everywhere, but there's something else to this picture, and it's not just waste, there's a lot of value in what's there. And it's not little either. So every year we throw like billions of tons of waste every year, but it's more than just waste. It's also $1.2 trillion of value that we're throwing away. It's, it's a huge waste and it's completely unnecessary. But it happens because we have a system that's not geared towards actually getting this back. And it happens because we have this kind of system. It's a linear system where each actor in this chain has absolutely zero incentive to, to actually get this back or to 
to, to capture this value in any way. So it ends up at the end as use and throw, so it's, it's just trash. But a lot is changing. Um, one thing is we have to fix this, obviously, but uh, global policy is driving this. So um, through, through, um, through taxes and regulation, we are very soon being forced more and more towards this, but there's no system to actually do this. And that's what we're trying to solve. So um, we're, we believe that the shift from a linear to a circular economy, which will happen and is happening right now, is one of the biggest financial opportunities there is and has ever been. Um, we've been doing this for five years. We started in 2018 uh, with an Ethereum-based solution. Uh, and then we went back to a SaaS-based solution for a while. Um, I'll come back to that. And it's based on the only real circular solution that actually works. It's a bottle deposit system where people are incentivized to bring back their bottles and they get paid a little bit by it. And it works, it works really well in Norway where this is where we take in our, um, our inspiration from. It recycles 97 to 98% of all the bottles. It's unheard of, it doesn't work anywhere else. But this actually is a system that can be brought over to other, uh, to other systems. It's just, it just needs to be thought through and have um, the infrastructure for it. So that's what we've been doing for the past five years. We built a SaaS product that, that incentivizes all these different parts because it's it's complex and it's a lot of different actors that need to work together and collaborate. Um, so we built a, a SaaS platform where brands get, get uh, the, um, the materials that they need and the data that they need to be compliant, et cetera, and to, for collectors and, and recyclers to get paid. And it works. We, from in 2018, we collected 10 tons of plastic waste. This year, we're close to 500,000 probably gonna hit about a million this year. And we're working with some of the biggest actors in the industry. And we're on six continents. We've, we're, we have users in 45 plus countries. So this is, this is happening. But what's gonna maybe interesting for everyone here is that we're also bringing all these users to Cosmos. And it's happening now. So um, in June, we're launching Empower Chain. Um, and it's a chain to to, to bring all this together, all the knowledge that we've built, we're bringing it together on chain, and we're incentivizing all this to, to work together. So we're launching our mainnet on June 28th, um, so it's pretty soon. We have our testnet, is live right now, incentivized, so come and uh, test it out, uh, get rewarded for that. And really what we're doing is we're taking all this knowledge that we gathered in the last five years, all the systems that we built on Web2 and test it out and figure out actually what works, and we're putting it on chain. Why? Because it's the only way to really scale this across a global solution. This is, this is hard stuff that doesn't really work if you just try to do this on Web2. It's, it's really, really tricky to, to, to do this across borders and across everywhere. So we're- Your 30 second warning. Yeah, I know. So we're scaling what, what we already know works and what we have already tested for five years. And now we're going to push this from those 10 to 500. We're going to push it all the way. And that's what we're doing. So, um, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Thanks a lot for that, Germand. I want to invite Agoric up next to tell us about their solution. Uh, all right. So, um, as you all know, Agoric is a sponsor of the conference, and so to avoid conflicts, we're not looking to compete here, but uh, we know that a lot of you are waiting for inter-protocol vaults to come out, and uh, so I wanted to do a quick demo of what the vaults application looks like. And really, my goal is that several of you walk away thinking that you're interested in bidding on liquidations, and all of you walk away thinking, oh, creating a vault is super straightforward, and I'm going to do it. Um, so, with that, I have a pre-recorded demo of uh, the application here, which I'm going to attempt to talk through live. Uh, yes, okay, so the video started. Um, so, 
You can see the Vault application even before you've connected your wallet. That's some feedback that we got on the PSM. Uh, you can see the collateral assets available, which will start with only Atom, uh, some parameters about them. Looks like it's a little fuzzy, unfortunately. Um, but you can see I've tried to connect my wallet, and now it's taking me to the Agoric Smart Wallet, which represents ERTB assets, displays offers, um, and connects to Kepler. Uh, so with that, I've connected. I can see that I don't have any vaults currently, uh, but it's showing me that I can just deposit some Atom and mint some IST. So again, super straightforward, very simple application uh, to make sure that users can quickly get in, create their vaults, and modify them. All right, so I've attempted to mint too much IST. It won't let me. Uh, I have to be uh, above the minimum collateralization ratio. So I adjusted it, and now it will load. Um, so the offer comes in here, and importantly, this is a Zoe offer. Uh, and so for those of you that aren't familiar with Agoric, it's saying I want to give 15 Atom and I want to mint 100 IST. And what that means is that Zoe protects you, that even if there's an error within the contract, it can't take your 15 Atom unless it's giving you back the 100 IST at the same time. So some might call that sort of an intent system. Um, okay. So uh, go back, so you can see that the, uh, I, I signed that offer in Kepler, and now uh, at th my vault is created. I can see the net equity, which lets me see uh, you can create multiple vaults of the same collateral type. And if I click in, I can modify my vault. So I can adjust collateral, and I can adjust the debt um, at the same time in whatever combination, so long as I meet the minimum collateralization ratio. So again, very straightforward. The, the goal is to, to show that this is a simple application that gets you in and out quickly, lets you modify and do whatever you need. Um, and so you'll see I'm uh, adding three Atom, and I think I'm minting 22 more IST. That's going to lower my collateralization ratio a little bit. Um, so I'll, again, accept that offer. And Kepler's going to pop up. I'll sign that. And uh, it, the video will go back to the vaults, and I'll see that uh, both my net equity has changed and my collateralization ratio has changed. What's not shown is liquidation. And so we'll talk about that in, in a minute here. Um, in particular, if you are at risk of liquidation, this UI will flash with a whole bunch of issues. Um, and we hope that some of you in the, in the audience may actually build applications to reach out to users, notify them via email, email SMS, whatever else. OK, moving on to the next slide. There we go. All right. Um, OK, so the liquidation auction structure. And I'm not going to try to read all of these bullets, uh, but I, this is something that we haven't talked a lot about publicly. And so I want to focus on a couple important parts of it. Um, one, all bids for liquidation are done in IST. They're done in the Agoric chain. Uh, the liquidation uh, runs as a Dutch auction. So it will capture the Oracle price at the start of liquidation. Any vaults that need to be liquidated, it will li wake up and hand them over to the liquidator so you don't need a keeper like you might have in MakerDAO or other systems. Um, and the auction runs uh, it's start, starting slightly above the Oracle price and moves down until either it has reached its IST target, sold all of its collateral, or reached its minimum price. Um, and certain things happen depending on uh, the, the actual result of the auction. Uh, but for bidders, you can place bids at any time. You can place bids during the auction. You can place them beforehand. You can also specify your bids either as by price, so I want to buy Adam at $6, or you can specify as a discount to the Oracle price, which means that at that captured uh, Oracle price at the start of the auction. Um, so if you want to place a long-lived bid for a 25% discount on Adam and use this as a cheap way to buy Adam, uh, I would highly recommend that. Um, and then, so last, uh, in terms of how the actual second warning, Roland. auction uh, settles bids, uh, it will settle in terms of time received. So it, we want to encourage bids to come in early if possible, uh, avoid a race condition. Um, we also uh, settle all bids at the auction step price. So you may have a bid at $100, but if the auction step price is at $7, you'll get paid out at $7. Um, and so there's a little bit more to it, uh, but importantly, right now, all bidding is via the CLI, Three, but it's actually two, very straightforward. One. Please come do it. Thank you very much. <laughs> As you can see, we're serious about this. We cut the mics, too. That's brutal. So one of the things Roland said was that he would be able to show us how easy it is to spin up a wallet. How do we feel about that? Yeah? yeah? Cool. Cool. Well, <sighs> I've just been obsessed by looking at the timer. I don't have time to feel. <laughs> but anyway, I want to invite Purify up next to walk us through their solution. Everyone. So, uh, 
My name is Vasily, a.k.a. Vasco, the one that uh, discovered India, as you may know. I'm a CEO of Purify. Uh, Purify is a compliance protocol that tries to bridge compliance with privacy. And uh, I think it's clear that the regulation is something inevitable that's going to come to DeFi as it came to CeFi. I think uh, uh, Spencer from uh, CoinList was also talking about it. We all know what happened with Tornado Cash, where it effectively got sanctioned by the US government. And I think some people realize that uh, DeFi is not free from the regulatory risk as well. But in Purify, we believe that when enforcing compliance in DeFi, it should be enforced in A, decentralized, and B, privacy-preserving matter. Because this is the essence of DeFi, and this is why we, this is why we use it. right? Uh, so, you can think of a Purify as a protocol that prevents, so to, uh, so to speak, dirty crypto or tainted coins to flow uh, through the smart contracts. And we're doing so uh, by creating a framework, so it's AML KYC framework, which basically has some features such as is entirely unbypassable because it integrates on the smart contract level. So uh, I don't know if you know, but now when you go to Uniswap, for example, and you press connect your wallet, they actually screen your wallet. And if it has a very high risk score, you are unable to uh, connect. But it's kind of a joke because it's only on the front end. So you can still take the same dirty wallet and connect directly to the smart contract. The next feature is that is decentralized. So we believe that the user should have a choice to choose a compliance provider they want to use and essentially the one that will be issuing the credentials to them. And the third is that we actually embrace zero knowledge proof and selective disclosure where users will not have to disclose their full data. And I think many of you know that zero knowledge proof allows you to prove something without revealing the actual information. So here you can see how to launch a rocket. No, it's just how Purify works. And uh, it's essentially is based on the um, uh, self-sovereign identity model, where there is an issuer, there is a verifier. And on the right side, you can see this pool sign, so this can be any DeFi arrangement, lending protocol, uh, staking protocol, or a DEX. And those um, entities can basically create rules for the users, aka wallets, when they're connecting. So those rules can be based simply on the risk score of the wallet. So let's say if you have a very high risk score, you have connections with sanctioned entities, with dark market, then you will not be able to use the DEX. Uh, the second part of the rule can also include KYC, and this is where uh, a lot of institutional players want to create permission pools. And also it can have tr um, travel rule compliance and so on. So it can be just one thing or multiple things. Uh, I hope someone from Osmosis <laughs> team is here. So this is basically like a small demo how it can look, for example, on the Osmosis DEX. So let's say Osmosis integrated Purify, and they decided to uh, prevent the wallets with a high risk score to connect to the DEX. So you can see that if the wallet actually has a high risk score, maybe it's connected to a, a human trafficking website or something, then they're basically number of options, so they can ask the user to use another wallet, or they can even ask the user to pass the KYC, and then the user will have an option uh, who they want to choose. Uh, all right, so we are actually blockchain agnostic, so we have already launched on the EVM chains, we already launched on some non-EVM chains, and now we're actively uh, working with the Cosmos community, uh, because uh, we want to bring our solution to Cosmos, and if you are a part of the Cosmos community and you have some ideas or you want to integrate any sort of a compliance uh, thing, please come talk to me. Uh, this is our wonderful team. And I think we already had some jokes about Gary this Gensler. This is your 30-second warning. But the Gary Gensler may be the Darth Vader of the crypto world, but with Purify, we're about to bring balance to the force. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, things got serious, really. We went from zero to human trafficking in a presentation. I didn't see that coming. Very nice. 
Um, so I want to give, I'm just wasting time so the judges have one second to fill out their scorecards. You're welcome, Mathis. Um, cool. Next, I want to invite Forbol to come walk us with their solution. Come on up. Thank you. Um, I'm Kwan from Forbol. I'm the co-founder of Forbol. Um, so um, we've been in the industry since uh, late 2017. And then, um, right, this is our team. Um, oops. No. Right, so <laughs> this is the first screen. So our mission is to provide a reliable uh, web infrastructure to the industry. And uh, we are a blockchain infrastructure solution. Um, and then we have some products, including Backdipper, which is the Cosmos open source Pro Explorer that have been um, forked for over 700 times. And then uh, we started everything since 2018 in Cosmos. Um, and uh, it's all started by um, a chat in the validator chat. And then we started with Game of Sticks, and then we became a validator. So, um, and um, so Big Deeper um, has been forked for over 700 times, and then it has been used by 35 networks. Um, some of, because it's all open source, some of the networks actually forked it and then run it as their uh, Pro Explorer, or like uh, Corium or uh, Max Protocol. And um, so our validator has been running over 60 networks, and um, we have over 50,000 uh, trustless stickers. So we are launching our RPC service as well. And um, so if you guys are developers, if you would like to build any dApps on the networks that we providing, um, talk to us. Um, so because we are also the validator on some cross-chain protocols like Axola and Wormhole, so we have a lot of different uh, nodes um, in, in non-Cosmos nodes, like Ethereum or Arbitrum. So if you guys would like to build any cross-chain um, applications that um, build between Cosmos and non-Cosmos networks, talk to us. Um, yeah. So this is our core team. And um, as you can see, uh, actually, we have more teammates than those showing here. And then like more than half of our teammates are actually girls. So if your developers would like to connect to girls in crypto, yeah, talk to us, um, connect with us. And I'm, in, and I'm dressing in red, so it's very easy to spot in the space. So yeah, thank you. Dekui. Thank you, Forbol. So um, yeah, it's, a, it's a very important thing to decentralize <laughs> RCP, or RPC. It's so awesome to see that. And also, of course, if you saw the earlier presentation from Martin at RBF talking about observatory, another key way to even understand like, how, much, how much is your governance centralized and how much is your node and validation stuff centralized. So very cool. I want to invite, uh, this one's kind of not fair for me to invite. I like these guys. We invested in them. But, I'm not a judge today, so that's good. <laughs> uh, Kaif, please come up and talk to us about data. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm Paul, head of ecosystem at Kaif. Before starting, I have just a few questions. So if you can just raise your hand, who is in, in the audience uh, is a validator? OK, we have a few data analysts. No data, oh, one, and web free builders, I think more. Okay, perfect. So for those who are not familiar with Kive, uh, Kive is building a decentralized data lake. So we started a bounty program between Parity Foundation and Arweave, and our two co-founders, John and Fabian, came with the idea on how we can basically import uh, blockchain data into a decentralized storage solution without losing the decentralized part of the data. So. To do so, they have created Kive. So Kive became a product um, just after these bounties. They get introduced to many layer ones, such Solana, Near, uh, Mina, 
and some others. They are also partners and investors of Kive. And we have done some other partnership with Accelerar, Injective, Evmos, and few others also blockchain. So we are fully blockchain agnostic and storage agnostic, meaning we can store all this data into Arweave or Filecoin, IPFS, Greenfield, and so over. And all these data are validated in a decentralized way before to be stored. So we are a Cosmos SDK based chain, but I will not spend too much time on the chain layer, consensus layer, because I think most of you know its work already, but more focus on the protocol layer. So on the protocol layer, we have a data source for a data pool for each data stream. So let's take the example of Cosmos Hub. Um, we're going to have a data pool for this data stream. It's work like kind of osmosis, where you have a liquidity pool for each asset. And on this data pool, you're going to have a bunch of validators. So you're going to have 50 validators, for example, in a data pool. And then this one, they will put in a collateral some Kive token, and according to the size of them stake, they will be, one will be selected to be the uploader, will upload the data into any decentralized storage solution. Let's take the example of Arwe, for example. And then we'll submit the proposal to the other validators, saying, hey, guys, I have uploaded this piece of data. Let's take, let's say, block 1 to 500 on Arwe. Can you check if the data are correct? So the other validators will run on them instance a Gaia node, for example, and we'll compare if the data are matching. If we reach out a quorum saying that the data are correct, the data are marked as verified, and the uploader receives a reward. If not, the, data, the uploader gets slashed, and then we move forward on the next bundle. The, the problem that we have in many proof of stake layer one right now, it's that not our incentive to produce block, but not to keep the full historical data of the blockchain. That's lead to centralization when we need to access this data uh, to build some product. So with Skive, we have solved this, solu this issue, and we, you can use this data to do many things. So you can do data analytics, for example, with Skive, we have a partnership with Airbyte, that is a Web2 company, that allow you to take any data that have been uploaded through Archive into your local warehouse to do data-driven decision, so you can import them into MongoDB, Snowflake, MyGraph SQL, SQL, and so on and so on. It's an ELT pipeline, so we extract, load, and transform the data after. You can also um, use the data um, through REST API and access multiple kind of data, and, according to the data that have been already uploaded. And uh, thanks to Polymer, uh, with IBC transfer in the future, we will be able to send data in a decentralized way to other chain. So we're going to have decentralized data sent to a decentralized way to other, any other chain in the future. We are fully permissionless, meaning anyone can create his own pool for a data stream, and everyone can join the network to start validate data. Once these data have been uploaded, they are accessible for free and forever, depending on the storage solution that you choose. For example, on Arweave, it will be forever stored, like 200 years. And you can access it as much as you want. You just pay for the upload and not for the query. We think it's important to make data public good. And that's it for me. If you have further questions, don't hesitate to ask after the demo session. Enjoy. Almost got the chance to say 30 seconds. OK, so um, data is a public good, super important. And that space is pretty vibrant right now as well. If you look even outside of Cosmos, to Arweave, as we mentioned, and finding a way to fund these things as public goods is very important. And I know we're in the bottom of bear market, but I think we'll find a way to do this. So thanks, Kaif. Um, next, I'd like to invite Yieldmos. Come on up, Yieldmos. <laughs> Hello, hello, everybody. I'm uh, George uh, with Yilmos. I'm a co-founder. And uh, we got started probably, I don't know, last year, April sometime. And um, our sort of thing that we're trying to do is bring you know, non-custodial asset management to the cosmos. What does that mean? Utilizing something called AuthZ to have users delegate permissions to us, and then we are able to then you know, execute very specific things on behalf of the user. That basically means that the user, that you don't have to give us custody 
of, of your asset. And one of the ways that we've sort of um, implemented this is through uh, an auto compounder for staking. So you, get, you give us um, permission to claim your rewards and stake. And we do that for you. The staking rewards go into your account. From your account, we're then able to delegate back to validators of your choice. And if you've uh, heard of Restake, you already sort of know what we do, but I think we have a few extra features and options that, that we sort of add to the mix, right? We have give you the ability to sort of delegate to multiple validators in one screen. You can choose a percentage to go to A, a percentage to go to B, and the remainder to just get deposited into your wallet just to sit there to do something else with. Um, one of the tools that we've created for, for the validators in the room and for the users is um, sort of be able to see all of the networks that a validator operates on that we support. Um, and so when the, vet, when the user goes to um, you know, select the strategy and click through all the screens, this validator's like, information and whatnot will be automatically pre-filled into all of the screens. And sort of that's what I've just talked about is sort of what we've sort of done up to this point and what we currently, currently do and what we offer. And sort of looking over the next sort of three months, what we would like to bring to market is, you know, our own app chain. And I have gotten <laughs> asked this question, why, why do we need an app chain? Um, and, you know, some, some people were talking about this earlier. And we, we need a sort of a cron, cron type solution, something that is able to kick off events that then sort of powered the rest of the things that we want to do and like enable users to be able to do like a paradigm of like a source, action, destination type of paradigm, right? So um, we've put together some smart contracts that are going to be for Juno and for Osmosis so that you can interact with, um, so that we can interact with other smart contracts like NetaDAO, Wind, um, Gelato, uh, you know, any, any smart contract on, on Juno. And same thing for Osmosis, um, Mars, and a bunch of the Osmosis uh, modules like Swap and, and things like that, Superflu, Aking. Um, but yeah, that, that is sort of um, what we've brought to market and sort of what we're hoping to get done. And I just want a quick show of hands of like who's actually heard of Yonos. Wow, thank you. And then if you could just keep your hand up if you've actually used, used our, any of our products. If you raise your hand. Okay, wow. So those of you who raised your hand at the first question, but now for the second one, please come talk to me and tell me what it would take for you to use Yonos, what we can add, how we can change things, what we can do. And of course, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please come find me. And um, yeah, thank you. I respect the hustle of Yieldmos, right? They, they, they got through their demo and they're like, let me get some willingness to pay data, some customer sentiment. It was good, real good. Um, next up, I'd like to invite Algolab up to talk to us about what they're doing in Cosmos. Hello, wonderful people. Uh, nice to see everyone here. Uh, I'm Andre Andone, and I'll talk to you about uh, Algolab today. I'm the strategy builder. We also have uh, a small core team because we just started. We have our CEO and our full stack developer. Uh, actually, we've been uh, building many similar projects over the years, but uh, we've had different issues and um, we weren't able to reach this level of uh, sophistication so far. We focus on uh, market studies and product development for these markets, and we were s mostly um, focused on uh, centralized exchanges until now, but we, al we always looked to the DeFi world to uh, someday be able to deploy everything there. Um, we've had a pretty complete vision where we just uh, collected data, tried to use as much uh, edge processing and edge collection as possible, 
we use machine learning. We have some uh, very nice uh, AI algorithms from 1979 that we use and optimize all the time. We don't need the, all the fancy GPT stuff yet. And our purpose was to make it easier for stakeholders and for participants to transparently use our products and to have everything audible. We wanted to have as much uh, logging. We want to be, to be very democratic and inclusive to everyone. But at the same time, we, went, uh, we wanted our system to be uh, non-custodial, uh, decentralized, distributed, and uh, most importantly, and something we're still going to work for a while, completely autonomous. So uh, we wanted to have everything on chain. This is not yet possible. Um, our best product so far is um, the DeFi Stars from Sommelier. Shout out to the Sommelier team. <laughs> Everyone. And shout out to Zaki. He has been very helpful and he has guided us uh, along with the team at the Seven Seas. So we can have this product uh, launched a month ago. We've been working uh, for six months on this before we launched uh, since the autumn. Uh, this product could not exist without uh, tokenized, tokenized vaults that were just uh, released last year. And this completes uh, much of the on-chain um, governance, administration, um, participation, uh, fee taxing, and everything that uh, one would need for their uh, asset management. Uh, DeFastars is a long-only approach for those uh, top uh, DeFi uh, projects. We chose the top DeFi projects because we wanted to have something stable that is still capable of providing yield in the next, uh, in the next two years. Uh, we will have um, many nice updates over the bull market if uh, the, those, comes, those come faster. We will, uh, of course, launch some new DeFi stars, uh, some new star products on the Ethereum blockchain. We are looking at uh, other uh, domains that um, can provide the performance. And recently, in talks with the Sommelier team, we are going to research uh, more into inter-blockchain liquidity and inter-blockchain or multiple blockchain uh, asset management uh, and, of course, the other primitives that are available on uh, those chains. Um, after we finish the decentralized vaults, we will continue working on uh, our core products and our infrastructure. We want to provide the, our infrastructure and, of course, provide uh, many partnerships where available. We still want to have a transparent system, something that is completely auditable and logable. And we are happy to see that there are many DeFi primitives uh, developed every day. Uh, and we want to use them all to have uh, the most performance needed. Um, yeah, DeFi stars, <laughs> pathway to the stars. We. Um, We're not doing anything much now because the, the market is not uh, going up, but uh, <laughs> we thank everyone for participating. <laughs> <laughs> and we have more updates soon. <laughs> oh, Thanks. One, one second, actually. Sure. You had a word in your presentation I didn't see anywhere else. Democratic workflow. Can you take a second to tell us what yeah, that means? I'm from Romania, so uh, democracy is a pretty big thing since like 33 years ago. We actually killed a guy for that, and uh, it is very um, misunderstood, but at the same important, and we're slowly learning how to do it. But it's, it is something like we want to provide everyone access to our tools and our products, no matter what their caliber is, and uh, DeFi and uh, Web3 UI is the only way to do it, and we provide security and trust because everything is cust non-custodial, like everyone controls their own private key nice. and decides when to enter, when to exit, uh, reads all the available documentation that is on the nice similar platform, and nice. uh, it, it, we are very um, amazed by how many people uh, actually uh, use the product so far, cool. like in less than a month. Well, thanks for explaining, because there's Thank a you lot as well. wrapped up. 
there's, those two words have a lot of baggage when you put them together, so it's good to hear, like, what do they actually mean? Very cool. Um, next, there's been a lot of DeFi innovation today. I'm going to introduce yet another one. This one's pretty cool. Uh, 42, come on up and tell us about what you all are doing. Oh, can we go back a slide? No. Um, what is the one thing that we need for the Cosmos ecosystem to survive? It's TVL. TVL is money, which is the lifeblood of any ecosystem. Without it, we are all screwed. How do we get TVL? We need good interchain UX, and that's the focus of 42. So 42 sees themselves as the front end to the Cosmos ecosystem. We have one goal, which is make Cosmos Interchain UX as simple as possible for users. So we've done a lot of um, user interviews. We've interviewed Cosmos users, and we've interviewed Ethereum users. Clicker. Oh. Um, we've interviewed Ethereum users about Cosmos. So the three problems that Cosmos users have is they struggle to keep track of their portfolios, they spend a lot of time seeking yields around the ecosystem, and they lose tokens along the way. And Ethereum users, they don't know where to start in Cosmos. They all know about it, and they're interested in it, and that's where the TVL sits, but they don't know where to start, and they don't understand Cosmos. So our, um, we're building a UX aggregator across the ecosystem. So very simply, users come in, very similar to Zapper Finance, um, and the Zapper uh, uh, co-founder is one of our advisors and in investing in our angel round. Users can come in, connect multiple wallets, and can very clearly see their assets sitting across chains in the ecosystem. They have a clear breakdown of their wallets, of what's stake to the validators, and what's stake to liquidity pools across chains in Cosmos. Our earn product is what we've built the most smart contracts for at the moment. So essentially, this is a way to earn across the interchain. So we've broken this out into four strategies, staking to liquidity pools, staking to validators, Staking to interchain strategies such as Quasar or Sommelier or liquid staking strategies with Stride and Quicksilver. So at the moment, we've inter we have integrations with four chains, with Osmosis, Neutron, Juno, and Terra. And users can essentially filter for Osmo, see all of the Os anywhere they can stake Osmo across the ecosystem, very simply see all the APYs across the ecosystem, and then simply deposit. All of our smart contracts are auto-compounding in terms of liquidity pools, um, and we also have um, restaking to the validators, which is also auto-compounding. Our third product, so we've got portfolio, earn, and swap. Our third product uses very simply choose a token, choose a chain, and we show them the best routes across chains. Um, those are the first three products we're launching. We're also doing ETFs cross-chain and NFTs cross-chain in the, in the pipeline. The TVL exists, it's just not in Cosmos. If we look over here, $6 billion, or 12% of Ethereum's total TVL sits in yield optimizers. In Cosmos, only 0.1% sits in yield optimizers, because there's no yield optimizers in Cosmos. And same with DEX aggregation. In Ethereum, 12 billion, or 13%, goes through DEX aggregators of volume. In Cosmos, only currently 0.6%. So we're looking at increasing both of those numbers significantly. This is the team, so I grew up in South Africa, in case you heard an accent. Uh, I have investment banking background, I studied at Berkeley, worked at Menlo Ventures and Binance Labs, and I've been running 42 for about 14 months in various ways, shapes, and forms. Um, our CTO product manager, Alicio, has got great um, engineering experience and uh, uh, consulting experience. We've got Esan, who was at uh, ThorChain in about 2015, and came over from Quasar, and then we've got Moritz, who's sitting over here, who uh, he's an amazing smart contract engineer, and you should chat to him. Um, this is the, the kind of what we're looking at as Ethereum other players. Um, these names, DeFi Llama, Zapper, Zarian, and DBank have all done super well on Ethereum, but no one's focusing on Cosmos at the moment. Um, we've got amazing infrastructure partners. That's like the key that I love about Cosmos is how much infrastructure actually exists. So we're using Numia for our interchain data indexing, Abstract for scalable smart contracts, and Skip for efficient IBC routing. Um, 
and how do we make money? Performance fees on the auto compounders and the ETFs, transaction fees on DEX aggregation, NFT aggregation, and token purchases, and then other fees through our index data, as well as MEV share with Skip in the future. 30 seconds. And that is it. <sighs> I didn't put our website up here or any of our Twitter, so if you want to contact us, 42.money, and then go to the Twitter. Thank you. I love the presentations that do research for me because if you've noticed, the VCs are pretty lazy. So that I love that slide with market size. That's great. I could just take a picture of that, use it in all my decks going forward. So thank you very much, 42. Uh, next up, I want to invite Polymer, who are connecting everything. Let's see what they're connecting. <laughs> My name is Thomas, I'm a developer relations at Polymer Labs, and today I'm going to prove to you that I can go from initialization of a, product, of a project to an IBC packet send in under five minutes using Polymer and the IBC SDK, and we're going to do this with a local instance of a Wasm D chain and a local instance of Ethereum, and this is going to go all across IBC end to end. So let's prove it. Have you got your timer set? Let's go. Remember, 11.01.23, I wasn't allowed to do it here live, uh, but I did it this morning. All right, what is Polymer and what do we want to do? So Polymer aims to be the IBC router hub uh, that brings IBC everywhere. No matter what flavor of IBC, we aim to support it, we aim to ensure that people can use it. Application developers cross-chain can use it, right? And crucially, this means that we don't only bring IBC to chains that are natively compatible with IBC, we also bring it to chains that are non-natively compatible with IBC. And we do that through a solution called Virtual IBC, uh, which essentially outsources a lot of the heavy lifting to our Polymer chain in the middle. Okay, so how does Polymer fit within the IBC SDK? Well, essentially because we have this Virtual IBC thing, we no longer have this simple situation with you know, two Cosmos SDK chains which have IBC natively uh, integrated. We have a situation uh, more like this. And don't try to understand this, it's quite intimidating, but this is kind of the point, right? Uh, because ultimately we want to empower cross-chain application developers, and this is way too complicated. An application developer might be more like this. And we've considered this, and we want to make it as easy to integrate their workflow, which is smart contracts on one side, smart contracts on the other side, WASM and EVM, and make sure that they can uh, just deploy the contracts, a few simple clicks, a script, and have IBC SDK uh, do the magic for them. So no longer all of this, which is essentially a lot of manual setup, which is error prone, which is laborious, um, you know, setting up your, your uh, relayers, setting up your chains, uh, clients, connections, channels, no more of this. We say yes to IBC SDK, and our cross-chain developer is so happy that they're giving us an Oscar, which doesn't make any sense, but hey. <laughs> okay, we have a notification. Uh, we have got a message, and this is a very simple contract, and we essentially just send the message, and it's the message thanking the organizers for a great event here. But are we on time? Remember, this initialization of this project happened 11.01.23, uh, and now we have a packet sent and received 11.03.37. Uh, so that's just over two minutes. And what has happened here is that all of the chains have been spun up, all of the relayers be behind the scenes, uh, the contracts have been deployed, and an IBC packet has been sent, all in just over two minutes, right? And this is really crucial because cross-chain application developers, they need to be able to just easy get set up, uh, deploy, and test their applications, right? Easy uh, uh, iteration as well in testing, and also have the tools um, to debug and troubleshoot. Now, IBC SDK, are we competing with someone? No, that's not really the thing. Like, we want IBC to succeed, and we're building the infrastructure, but we realize that just infrastructure isn't going to be enough. We need great tooling, right? And this is why yesterday, Bo, our co-founder, uh, announced OpenIBC. And in fact, uh, the IBC SDK, what you've seen here a little bit is the CLI tool, but it's also going to be a library that is going to be open sourced. 
And people can, you know, application frameworks can build on top of that. And we have an open invitation to collaborate on that because we really want to see IBC succeed because the real competition is coming from uh, other interop, uh, interop protocols. So one slide about uh, the team, um, the co-founders, Bo and Peter are around here, so uh, say hi to them uh, if you see them. And one very important point, it's always nice when people clean up after themselves. IBC SDK enables you to do that. All of the containers, 30 uh, seconds. in this case it was nine containers, they're cleaned up and no more fuss after. And uh, yeah, stay in touch with us. Thank you. I really didn't want to interrupt that last CLI screen just so you could see it, but we got to stay on time. I'm sorry. Um, we have about four more projects, so really thanks to all of you for sticking around for all of this. This has been great. Um, I want to invite Abstract up next. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Adair Kelly and I am co-founder of Abstract Money. They asked us for a fun fact, I majored in classical music. I play the oboe, so if you wanna play some chamber music after the conference, let me know. Um, so, I love Cosmos. Cosmos is awesome, Cosm Wasm is awesome. But there are a lot of problems that we have in this ecosystem. We are not collaborating with one another very well. We are building our applications and our app chains in silos instead of bringing the horizontal scaling that we want to have in the Cosmos ecosystem and that modularity and composition that is touted by the, uh, the Cosmos SDK. And the consequence of this is that we have insufficient tooling for smart contract application development. And this insufficient tooling means that teams are spending a lot of time setting up their infrastructure, building the same things, the same primitives from scratch each time. And finally, funding challenges. Public goods funding is broken. It just doesn't work. And so we're trying to solve this. So a consequence, as I mentioned, is the stifled app innovation. We've seen a lot of iteration over the years where we have new DEXs, new NFT marketplaces, new boring products. Um, and apps are built from scratch equals b boring products. The teams also have to do manual integrations. They have to maintain these integrations with their partners if they want to collaborate. Um, and these integrations, they keep to themselves, otherwise their competitors might beat them to market. Bad tooling. So at Abstract, we're trying to make DAP development easy. Oh. Um, <laughs> we're trying to get you, as a developer, to be able to go from idea to MVP, to product launch as soon as possible. And this is only possible through enhanced collaboration and composition of people's knowledge and development skills. <laughs> um, so we have a cosmic opportunity. Um, we, our tooling needs to enable us to build applications in a smaller and more modular and composable way. So right here, we have an example of 42 Finance. Shout out to Dan. Um, they've built an auto compounder on Abstract, and we've reduced their number of lines needed by 75%. Their number of smart contracts, same. Their application stack is much more scalable than other auto compounder projects or any projects in Cosmos right now. And how is this possible? Through Abstract's account architecture. All applications are built on top of account abstraction. These are programmable, programmable abstractions that make, um, pro programmable, sorry, <laughs> um, that allow for deeper integrations with your smart contracts, and they enable something that we're calling personalized DeFi. We were going with self-hosted DeFi first, but SheFi didn't inspire the right thoughts. Um, so, Right here, we can see the service integrations, and these are actually modules. We have like DEX adapters, staking adapters, any primitive that we've already built in DeFi, we have adapters for those, and they're, they're modules. And 42 has built the auto compounder on top of this that leverages these existing integrations maintained by other teams. And this is composition, and it also enables for sustainable development because the teams that are maintaining these integrations are getting paid. So they're financially incentivized to keep them maintained. Um, and what I, going back to personal DeFi, why would we rely on like, corporations and services to run these for us when we can run them ourselves? We can create 
an, um, an instance of account abstraction, an abstract account, and install these applications ourselves and run an auto compounder on our assets, completely self-sovereign. And so something else that we want to emphasize in Cosmos is that we shouldn't be thinking about chains. We should just be thinking about we're interacting with an application. And so we're touting this as chain abstraction. We abstract away a lot of the things for developers and for users with a name service and a version control, which allows for asset contract and dex pool and chain resolution. Um, here's our status. I'll skip over that. Um, my shout out to my co-founder, Robin Bishop. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. We actually met at Cosmoverse 2021, and now we're here. So that's pretty cool. And we won HackWasm last year. Um, we're building for builders. And so you can follow us on Twitter at AbstractSDK. Check out our website at Abstract Money. Um, and check out our open source developer tooling on GitHub. So thank you very much. I don't know about you, but me personally, I really like what these folks are going after only because public goods funding in a bear market becomes the first thing that gets thrown away, right? So super cool to design a mechanism that can find a way to support developers through the bottom of this. Um, we only have, I believe, three more. So I'd like to invite uh, Nimhol up next. Um, hello everyone, my name is Ellie and me and my colleague Hans represent the Dial Out company. Basically, we're operating on Neem technologies and I hope you guys are aware of this because yesterday was a presentation about Neem. So who did you guys, who of you attended it, if I may ask? Yeah, and I do hope that you share our concerns about privacy because that's what I'm here to talk about. So um, Neem itself is basically a gateway. And uh, using Neem technology, we created the proof of concept Rotor, which is a hardware solution of the same problem of anonymizing packages and uh, getting the truly anonymous connection to the internet without any of your metadata being stolen. So, um, well, first of all, if uh, Neem Gateway already exists, why do we even need a Rotor? And um, the answer to this will be that the whole traffic will be localized and we'll be able to access and um, fully control it. Um, the business case for that would be any place where you want to save your anonymity or any place that use VPN. If I was to set up this thing and if I was to run it here, all your traffic of people who would connect to this router will be anonymized, which is actually very cool because the integration here is available also for the any kind of router. It can be LTE traveling router. It can be Raspberry. It can be any other model. So um, as far as you understand, the um, anonymization of the traffic also means that there will be minimized attack surface, amplified privacy, and network segregation. So we can truly have the control of what we share or not. Uh, consider this as your kind of uh, the magic whale hood that you wear, and then you're anonymous but this can be in the shape of your normal router. And of course, um, I think it's clear that we're using the zero trust model, never trust, always verify. Well, never trust and do not trust even me when I'm telling you this, but just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ha we have to verify the things, right? And um, yeah, this is the solution that would support this on hardware level. Um, Currently, this is the way how uh, could work the data flow, for example, that you connect the SOX5 is the special library, like a WebSocket library. Then we have the gateway on Raspberry, then it connects to any other gateway. Basically, this being just a protection before you go to any other unprotected or undocumented source. Um, since I just mentioned that we're more of, of a proof of concept things, um, we are dealing with a, a certain limitations at the moment. That will be NAT, the network, address translation, and the peer-to-peer -peer, um, protocol limitations. Not everything is well uh, compatible, and we're, walking, we're um, working to solve that. We've been able to solve this uh, for the current demonstration, <laughs> uh, which I thought um, I would be able to actually bring my computer, but nevertheless. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Also, we're integrating the Leap P2P implementation, so we're working with that as well. Uh, how this version works now, we're using the VPN tunneling to see that the traffic has really been filtered through the name gate. Uh, yeah, but again, well, because we're using VPN at the moment, VPN is owned and can be reverse engineered. So, of course, there are limitations with that. What we're planning in the future will be probably developing a custom silicon based on RISC V or licensing from IRM. So we'll be handling uh, this either on software level or hardware level. We can take both routes, but they will require quite a bit of research, and I think that's what's exciting about that. Um, all of the code you can find in the repo, and I would actually highly recommend you guys to check this out. Um, the startup is quite new, so we don't have that much of official stuff yet. Mostly it's just the working co code and proof of concept. And yes, I would say that's it, and thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thanks a lot. It's great to see things that are like super, super early as well. And don't worry, we did ask everyone who presented today to be honest. Tell us if you're way past seed or early, just so we can judge everyone on equal footing. And uh, that's a little bit of a preview for how we're going to announce the winners. But uh, anyway, let's get to the next one. Movement Labs, please come up. Hey guys, I'm Rushi, co-founder and CTO of Movement Labs. I'm going to continue the fun fact thing, so I actually used to play cello, so I guess we have an orchestra going on change. Um, and B, there might be a typo in there, I don't know if they let me change it or not, but I'll continue. Movement Labs is building a modular framework to build, deploy, and install move-based infrastructure in any distributed environment. So last year, we saw $3 billion lost in smart contract hack. Many of you guys probably remember the DAO attack, a large-scale ransomware attack in which hackers are able to basically withdraw funds multiple times for a smart contract. That's not fun for anyone, because you probably don't want your DeFi app losing millions and millions of dollars every year. So Move is designed by Facebook, the DM project, which split up into AppDust and SUI and a few other branches, to build the most secure and highest performance language with built-in on-chain verifiers, um, by code compilers, um, dynamic dispatch to allow for verification tools to pinpoint um, pinpoints. If you do a little comparison, there's a lot of Rust Max using here, so I might get some flame for this. Um, but some key notable things here are formal verification. So move developers kind of specify who has access to their contracts and when they've accessed. So they can kind of say, like, if you're hacking from this particular point of contact, you can't even actually do that in a smart contract. So before a smart contract is even executed, it checks the resource, type, and memory safety. And then once it is executed, it can only be modified by a single mutable reference at a time, basically creating the most secure and highest performance smart contract language in addition to this feature called dynamic NFTs. So you have many gaming partners that potentially mint millions and millions of NFTs, particularly these first-person shooters. Um, if you're minting millions of NFTs, you probably don't want um, to be burdened by uh, constantly swapping assets. Instead, we can swap out traits at will within the smart contract itself. So what's our first step? We're launching M1, a community-first, modular move layer one, incubated by Ava Labs, providing the highest possible TPS, instant finality, decentralization, and data zero access to mass liquidity. So why Avalanche? Long story short, it's this question of liquidity sharing. You guys have probably heard of Aptos and Sui, the two biggest move chains on the market. The question is, we're going to look at Solana, how do we attract liquidity to these chains? What we do with Avalanche, particularly Avalanche warm messaging, which is a native kind of bridging protocol, is, for example, if a yield aggregate launch on Aptos, there's probably no yield to aggregate. That same yield aggregate can build on top of M1 and get day zero access to Benchy, Trader Joe, GMX, and essentially share the liquidity because of the same valor is set. So what we do is kind of jumpstart these DeFi apps and actually allow them to see adoption. But we're not starting there. We're, we want to see move everywhere. We're starting with Avalanche and going to Cosmos, building kind of different solutions with different chains. Um, so we have a layer two coming up on uh, OP stack publishing transaction Celestia, um, working with a few big chains like Hashgraph and bringing move to them front doors, um, and essentially bringing all infrastructure. Our goal is to be the consensus of move in that we're able to provide move-based infrastructure for different chains. Um, on here is a Cosmos kind of play, which uh, we're unveiling today, which is M2, which is a move module that we acquired from another partner called Strobe Labs, essentially allowing Cosmos chains to have move protocols deploy on top of them through a move module. You can kind of think of like the EVM module at most, but bring a move module and allowing us to partner with different chains and bring move to the front door of Cosmos. Um, this is kind of some overview on how it looks like that architecturally. 
kind of combining Move, Aptos, um, Sui, and Cosmos all in one modular environment, um, and routing different chains. So if you have Mars, like a lending protocol, um, and let's say an NFT on Kronos, we kind of centralize all those transactions directly um, with the Move module, publishing transactions to our base chain. Innovation, um, we have closed source RESTful and JSON RPC endpointing. Um, we're bringing parallel processing for the first time to Avalanche and a few other EVM ecosystems, including Cosmos, um, so we can get those high TPS numbers that many gaming protocols and many apps have been dreaming of. Um, and yeah, parallel processing, um, being modular, so upgrading our throughput to Celestia, and also being modular so we can pu publish and swap out DA layers, swap out execution virus, and not just app dust move, SWE move, and a few other ZK stuff we're incubating. Um, so we have over 40 partners lined up to build on top of us. You can probably recognize a lot of these names. Um, Trejo Joe, GMX, Benchy, Gunzilla Games. Um, whereas gaming, DeFi, Moo seems to be the highest commodity in terms of programming language, and we want to make it accessible for, everywhere, uh, for everyone everywhere. Um, so go-to-market strategy, um, definitely attracting projects from Aptos and Sui, um, providing them with liquidity and the ability to launch on different ecosystems, as well as uh, um, acquiring projects from Avalanche, Cosmos, et cetera, and deploying on top of our chain. Tokenomics, um, so here key value add is if you look at Aptos and Sui tokenomics, 70% um, of Aptos is an investor in team hands. 70% um, is value that is denominated by Aptos centralized authorities. So it's actually sequential nature. We want to be a community first initiative in that our token supply um, goes to developer incentives and actually incentivize the community to build on top of move. Um, roadmap, so I'm going to end off here. Uh, we have DevNet out right now. We have Testnet launching next month and Mainnet coming Q4. Um, and we welcome all developers, whether Utility, Rust, Cosm, Wasm, to at least try out Move. Um, we believe it's the future. Many agree so. And why not work Three, together on this? Two. <laughs> wow, look at that. Uh, it, got, it got a little bit, a little Mickey Mouse at the end at 2x speed, but that's good. No problem. Thanks for making the cut. Um, we have, I believe, two more. So let's get Evmos up here to talk about what they've been working on with IBC. Check, check. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? I'm the second last, so I hope you still have power. Um, I'm Daniel. I lead product at the Evmos core development team. And I joined quite early before we even launched. We're still Ethermint. Since then, a lot of stuff has happened, but we've been innovating EVM, EVM in the Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, I, do wanna, I do wanna give you a short uh, demo about EVM extensions. Uh, EVM extensions allow smart contracts on the EVM to access core protocol functionality. I'll show you why this matters. Um, but in the, just a value proposition. So EVM extensions generate next generation of scalable dApps powered by interoperability. In easy words, this is you can deploy your application once on the EVM and then it's accessible from everywhere. Let's jump into how this works. So basically, uh, you can deploy, or actually, without EVM extensions, right now, smart contracts are iso isolated um, in the EVM. So they can talk to other smart contracts, but they don't really have access to any data or liquidity outside of the EVM. With the EVM extensions, you can deploy your smart contract on the EVM and use a Solidity interface to access core protocol functionality, such as staking, voting or IBC to communicate with other blockchains. Basically anything you can implement or any message you can implement in the Cosmos SDK. Uh, this is generating a lot of new use cases for staking. You can have uh, staking indexers, sub DAOs with voting, but also like you mentioned, cross-chain uh, applications. Uh, one example, you could for, for instance uh, have a Osmosis outpost on Evmos. So you can use the Osmosis interface, be connected to the Evmos network, pay with transaction fees to interact with the EVM extension, and then uh, use, provide liquidity or swap tokens uh, over IBC on the cost, uh, Osmosis uh, chain. Uh, I want to give you a quick demo um, how the IBC transfer works. So here we have a, can you play the video? Yeah. We have a Evmos chain and a Osmosis chain uh, connected over Relayer. And we want to transfer tokens, Evmos tokens from the Evmos chain to osmosis. So we have a balance of zero on an address on osmosis. And what we want to do is use Remix to uh, interact with the EVM extension through a smart contract. Um, basically, if you know IBC, you know this normal uh, interface. You have a memo. Um, you can basically approve uh, the interaction with the smart contract and say the spending limit that you have, just like you know it from the EVM. And then you want to uh, basically 
or it does the approval, uh, and then you will be able to interact with the smart contract to transfer Evmos tokens from the Evmos chain to Osmosis. So we basically perform the transfer through the Solidity interface, um, sign the transaction, and wait for the transaction to be included in the block. This will be picked up in the packet from a relayer, sent to Osmosis, and then on the first one, you don't see that it's relayed yet because it takes a second, but then the Osmo or the Evmos token is uh, arriving on Osmosis. So basically, this is enabling a lot of new use cases for uh, interchain uh, communication from the smart contract level, and uh, you can test it on testnet. Uh, starting next week, there's already staking and distribution working from the EVM extensions. We have a hackathon running. We have an Evmos uh, encode gr grants program that has been running really well, and we're happy to talk to you about more projects. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we did have one, just one project sneak in at the end here. And so uh, for our final presentation, I want to introduce, I'm not making this up, Bro and Bro. What's up, Gateway? Bro and Bro here. We hopped into the our last train of this demo. Thank you, everybody, for that one. All right, so uh, we've been validating uh, in a Cosmos ecosystem for roughly two years uh, now. And over these two years, we've uh, been like drive and experience through many various uh, apps and interfaces. And uh, we decided, like we're thinking very oftenly, uh, that users deserve better interfaces. It might sound like a cliche, but it is uh, what it is. Uh, and especially if we'll be talking about the new users, uh, which we are struggling uh, these times in our ecosystem. Uh, so when the user comes into the Cosmos, he creates a seed, and he gets confused even, like, is it a, do I have a one account or many accounts? Uh, so uh, that's basically uh, taught us, uh, like, lead us to the thought that we should approach to account management uh, more like a, not a chain-centric, but account-centric manner. And you probably um, all get the latest uh, Kepler update, which is uh, rolled up in pretty much the same manner. Uh, all right, so what if you have not the only one account, but many accounts, like one for staking, one for NFTs, uh, the other one for drops, uh, whatever? Um, it seems like it kind of... a uh, uh, creates uh, your identity, like many accounts, other sides of you. Uh, so, yeah, kind of a Web3 identity. And we decided to um, like a, create a, some proof of this identity to call it a, like an ID or passport. Uh, and we decided to use the smart contract on the Boston blockchain, uh, which is actually a, like a NFT minter contract called the Passport. Uh, it allows you to um, connect and link all your accounts uh, with a proof to one place, and then uh, have it like a uh, all-in-one place management for a port portfolio, staking, uh, voting, uh, whatever. So uh, that's basically the will be the screenshots of our um, beta app. Uh, that we presenting here. So it's a passport creation page. Um, you have to upload the avatar first. It being uploaded to IPFS via the built-in IPFS node. Uh, you select the the name. Uh, you connect your Kepler account here first. Then you sign the constitution, uh, confirm, and boom, you have a passport. You're a Moon citizen now. Um, this is basically the overview of the like a main page. Uh, we got a pure quality, uh, but you can drive you through your various accounts, uh, liquid tokens, uh, like portfolio uh, coming in per day. Uh, you may select the valuation for like USD, Ethereum, whatever. Um, and we only have the Cosmos Hub for now uh, there, but there will be more chains coming. Um, like certain. <laughs> All right, there's our um, validators and government sections. Uh, so um, 
we see here that uh, all the validators uh, I have staked from my accounts connected to my password are shown here. I can click on everybody, uh, on everyone, um, manage, enable, disable, restake, claim rewards, uh, stake or unstake. Uh, and the governance section leads us to the following page uh, with the proposals. Uh, here will be displayed the proposals for all the chains we support uh, in a kind of a fancy manner. You can open the, each one to get a statistics, uh, like filter them, vote, uh, and so on. Uh, one of the interesting things uh, we have here is like for every proposal vote, um, let's say validator voted yes, but um, it is interesting to know how his community is voted. So one of the features our app have, uh, we can show up uh, how many delegators of each validator voted according to the validator or against or... Uh, and all this data is being brought from our Spacebox indexer, uh, which is, uh, has been supported uh, with a Cosmos Hub uh, Prop 155. Thank you guys for voting. So that's basically it. Check out Beta Bro and Broio and feedback appreciated. Thank you guys. Bro. Thanks a lot to all of the uh, folks who demoed and pitched today. What's going to happen now is we're going to give the judges five minutes to tabulate, but we also want all of you out there thinking and talking about this. Who do you think was the best? Really. Actually, not even the best. Let's do it this way. Some of these you can obviously tell are like pre pre seed. They're showing you Figma slides, or they're showing words, or they're showing CLIs. They're not live yet. We can bucket those in the pre seed, right? Some of them are pretty obvious, and that's not an egg. You are where you are, right? We want to reward you for where you're at, how you presented, where, where you are, but we don't want to measure you against the, you know, the folks who have raised like $20 million. So, amongst yourselves, think a little bit. Those who are kind of further along, those who are earlier stage, who would you vote for, right? And this is my way of buying these folks time to judge. <laughs> so uh, five minutes, don't go anywhere, and we'll be with you in just a sec. Yes, and we're turning this into an interactive exercise. So while they do that, if you can all turn to your right and start debating with your partner. I see two co-founders right there. I wonder between you two who's going to win the <laughs> debate. Um, but yeah, we want you guys to come up with your own reactions, and then we will call them on stage. And yeah, so who got you most excited?
All right. Um, I can see the judges still arguing amongst themselves, but they have to decide now. So we want to call all the folks who presented uh, back to the room if you've left, please. I hope you hear me out there. Come on back. We're about to announce the winners. I'll kick it over to Sam. Okay, well, I'm actually going to call the judges up here. We kept them shadowy at the start. I don't know if it, a little unconventional approach. They weren't introduced before. We're like, they exist. So first, before we get to the fun part of the winners, I'm going to ask each of you just to introduce yourselves, what firm you're with, and, and maybe like your reaction at this moment before we unveil the winner. My name is Franz. I'm on the investment team at Flow Traders. Um, we're a global market making firm. We're listed, uh, regulated, and deep into uh, crypto. Um, what's sort of good to see is how full the room is. So um, good energy all throughout these uh, one and a half hours. Um, yeah, we were just discussing amongst, amongst us. Um, very impressed to see the level of uh, yeah, presentations and the sophistication of what they're building. So that is short. Hi, uh, I'm Sam Cassett. Uh, I have notably in my background uh, helped start Consensus. I funded MetaMask from my team, which you've probably all used. Um, and I've uh, recently, in the past year or so, gotten very impressed by the Cosmos ecosystem. Um, and I co-founded uh, a new fund called Analog Interchain uh, with Jake from Juno, you probably know. Uh, and I'm very excited about a lot of the projects we just saw. Hey everyone, I'm Matthijs, one of the partners over at Maven 11. Um, I think we're a crypto-only venture fund, mostly known for our modular thesis, which is playing out. Um, it's great to be here, and thanks for organizing all the Workaway people. Um, and amazing to see all the people building uh, app chains in the cosmos. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Mark, I'm an investor from Workaway. Um, we are also a crypto-only fund focused on all Web3 specific um, startups. Uh, super excited to be here, and it was impressive to see what all the projects are building, depending on the maturity they are in. But we are all, I think, had a unison view that it's very impressive what people are building. Amazing. Um, Okay, well with that, I actually don't know who the winners are. So I believe you guys, because we wanted to keep it fair, obviously we have projects that have raised tens of millions of dollars here, but we're unveiling new products that we wanted to give them the stage to demo, and then we have others that are much earlier in their journey. So as Jahed said before, we asked the judges to split the ranking sort of into a pre-seed and post-seed group. Um, and determine a winner for each. So guys, who wants to do the honors and announce the winners? I'll cover your friends for the regulation. Eh? Um, I think I'm happy to announce the pre-seed winner. Um, we had some discussion about this because there's two working together very closely. So maybe they're a little bit both, um, but it was the people from 42. And then also, obviously, Abstract Many, because they work together so closely. Um, <laughs> our reasoning here was that, well, obviously, Cosmos is quite fragmented. And these guys are building something for end users to make all that fragmentation sort of one piece. Um, yeah, anybody else uh, has anything to chip in here? <laughs> um, yeah, I I just want to comment in general. I was I was excited, you know, uh, Dan, that you mentioned, uh, you know, you surveyed Ethereum users, which is kind of like my background, how they don't really understand how to get into the ecosystem, um, and you focus on TVL, and I think uh, liquidity building the ability to to move liquidity into this ecosystem is one of the things that's going to make it thrive, uh, and I think. Putting, putting all that in front of the user in a way that's really accessible um, is just obviously extremely beneficial for the ecosystem. So that was what I was really excited about. So what I can say, um, no, yeah, it's a market maker world about liquidity. So that's what got us very excited. The fragmentation of liquidity, which Cosmos in general should reduce, and then what you guys are specifically looking at. So that's what's um, made it very exciting. And we're already chatting internally on the company 
communications about you guys. So very positive. I mean, maybe just like a shout out to the abstract team. I think that, like I really liked how you are thinking about like bringing the user focused uh, design into the space. I think that's what the Cosmos need. It needs simplification, and we need to put you know user first and start the design from there. You know, great job. Awesome. And do you want to do the honors for ends for the post seed, or was that it? This is this one. This one. Okay. This one. <laughs> this one. This one. This one. What? Oh. I don't know. Maybe there's, that was all of it. <laughs> okay. Anything else that you'd like to add, or should we let you all go and talk more about this at the steak bar and beyond? So that's probably it. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to add this all to YouTube probably by the end of the evening. So if you, there was any that you had to hop out on and you want to see these pitches or send them to your team, um, they're going to be there. We'll add all their Twitter so you can reach out to any of these teams as well and ask them all the questions that you were keeping inside. Thank you so much and have a wonderful evening.